and we back now today's video i'm gonna be talking about the month that ruined the future of many nba teams i know it's heavy now this is the first time i orchestrated a video similar to this so if you've been around the channel for a long time and you like this format let me know by leaving a like on this video and if you're new a subscription is always welcome but let's get into it in order to tell you this story, we have to go back in time. It was the summer of 2016. The Cleveland Cavaliers just put together the biggest comeback in NBA Finals history as they defeated the Golden State Warriors after trailing 3-1 in the series. Now, two weeks after that series wrapped up, we hit NBA free agency. Now, free agency is arguably the most fun part of the NBA season as we can see a team's entire direction change dramatically. But this free agency was a lot different from free agencies we ever had. This year was the year of the cap boom. Back in 2014, the NBA signed a nine-year, $24 billion TV deal, and we are finally about to see the NBA players get a chunk of that money. This massive TV deal caused the salary cap to jump up an entire $24 million for the year. For reference, between the year 2001 and 2013, the salary cap increased around $1 million a year. For further reference, the last time the NBA saw an extreme salary jump was back in 1996, where it jumped up $8 million. So the next jump will be three times more than they've ever seen a jump in one offseason. And also thanks to this crazy TV deal, the NBA cap for the 2017 free agency was expected to jump another $15 million. With this in mind, teams spent money, and they spent a lot of it. Minutes after teams could legally sign free agents, we saw the Los Angeles Lakers sign center Timothy Mozgov, who had just won a ring in Cleveland, to a four-year, $64 million deal. Though this looked like a huge overpay from the start, with the idea of the cap going up another $15 million next year, contracts like this would become the norm around the league. And that was the thing for the month of free agency. We saw many players make more money than they could ever have expected. Luol Deng signed a four-year $72 million contract with the Lakers. Evan Turner signed a four-year $70 million contract with the Trailblazers. Chandler Parsons signed a four-year $94.4 million contract with the Grizzlies. Bismack Biyombo signed four-year $72 million in Orlando. Yamahimi, four-year $64 million in Washington. And maybe the worst of them all, Joe Kim Noah signed a four-year $72.6 million contract with the Knicks. Amazingly enough, deals signed this summer might actually end up looking like bargains next year. Think about it. A player making $18 million this coming year will be worth 20% of the cap room, but only 16.3% by 2017-2018 season. So even if $18 million per year is normally too much for, say, Ken Bazemore, it could quickly fall back in line with what players like him earn. Now, these were just a few of the major deals that were given out that offseason, but it's okay, right? Next year, we see another increase of $15 million, right? Wrong. Instead of $15 million like they projected, it went up just $5 million. Now, these deals look worse than ever before. Teams that signed a player in the 2016 free agency now don't have the money to sign someone else in 2017. And that leaves the team scrambling to make deals to get rid of these bad contracts or they're stuck. Think about the Lakers. In order to get rid of the Timothy Mozgov deal, they had to send a promising young player and D'Angelo Russell to Brooklyn. But then you have teams like the Portland Trailblazers who signed Evan Turner, Alan Crabb, and Miles Leonard all in 2016 stuck. The only way the Portland Trailblazers can make themselves better for the upcoming season is to get rid of some of these bad contracts and it may end up costing them one of their top two players. Now this is the theme of the video. The Blazers, the Heat, the Pistons, the Bucks, the Knicks, the Wizards, the Hornets, all in similar situations. Signed some deals in 2016 that were worth too much money and now they're stuck. Not only did these false predictions ruin the future of some NBA teams, it also ruined the future of NBA free agents. In 2017, we saw several players who would have got max contracts in any other year settle for less money. Paul Millsap signed a three-year $90 million deal with the Nuggets, and Cal Lowry seemed to be a guaranteed lock for a max deal in Toronto, but had to settle for a $100 million deal over three years. This is also common for the average NBA player. George Hill, who was coming off the best season of his career, Nene, and Andre Robeson all had to agree to deals below their value. Now, on free agency just a couple months away, I think it's a good idea to take a look at how this will affect the 2018 free agency class. Approximately 80% of the league will be over the cap. Majority of the teams that do have cap space are teams that are 
tanking Atlanta Hawks, Sacramento Kings, Brooklyn Nets, and the Chicago Bulls. Since these teams have cap space but aren't looking to sign a big name free agent, you can expect some of these teams to take on a bad contract or two in exchange for picks or young players similar to the Timothy Mosgaard deal we talked about earlier. But there are a few destinations that have cap space and are ready to win now. The 76ers, the Lakers, and the Indiana Pacers are just the biggest of them. While Indiana has never been a place for big name free agents, since they have the money, Indy is an option. Now with the money all being washed up, that leaves the 2018 free agency class with little while. Players like Tyreek Evans, who had the best year of his career, have two options. Sign with a lesser team for more money, or take a pay cut to play for a contender. And it's also made cases like Will Barton's, who turned down a four-year, $42 million contract in October, seem a lot worse. With only a few teams having that much cap space, well, he's gonna have to take less. Luckily, now we're at a point where the cap will increase steadily instead of big jumps at a time, but until these crazy contracts that were given out in 2016 are at the end of their deals, a lot of teams are gonna be stuck. Now, this wasn't in my script, but I thought it was worth talking about anyway. So in 2016, of course, like I mentioned, we had the $24 million cap increase for every NBA team. And you know what this welcomed up? Teams that were already stacked to have enough money to get even more stacked. You know what team I'm talking about? The Golden State Warriors, baby. 2016, Kevin Durant went to the Golden State Warriors and basically took a team that was already incredible and made them godlike. It made them godlike. So the National Basketball Players Association actually had an offer on the table from the NBA that had it where each year we'll see an increase. Instead of it being, boom, $24 million here. Boom supposedly 15 million dollars here but the national basketball players association was like no we don't want that so thank you nbpa for getting kevin durant to the warriors now that's all we have for this video i just thought it was something pretty interesting to talk about hopefully you did too if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave it a like and let me know if you like this style of video for you newer guys a subscription is really welcome in the description there'll be a link to my nba related podcast and of course it's playoff time so we're wrapping up on nba analysis on every single game thank y'all so much for watching we'll be back very very soon peace the i said that on twitter that this team should be ashamed and it's not because they lost because lebron has destroyed the eastern conference for close to a decade now it's not that they lost it's that they lost how they lost in four yeah and they were guarding lebron one-on-one -on -one.